In this video, I'll be using PowerShell to configure start menu layout for Windows 11. I'm starting this video from my GitHub page and that's because there are a few bits of information here that I will be using for this video. And I will leave the URL in the description down below. And in this video, I will show you two methods how to configure the start menu layout, but both of them are workarounds and you should not use them if you have Microsoft Intune in your environment. And the first method that I will be showing in this video works only for the new users. And that means that it is only useful if you're using Windows Configuration Designer or other provisioning tools that allow you to execute scripts before the users are created. And it works by mimicking Microsoft Intune settings for deploying start menu layouts with PowerShell and registry settings. And the second method works by creating a start menu layout for a single user and that generates a file called start to bin and we can use this file to deploy start menu layouts for other users. And here you can see the PowerShell snippet for the first method and it works by creating a list of applications that we want to pin to our start menu. Then it will create a JSON object from that list and it will put that JSON object in Windows registry with all other necessary settings for this feature to activate. And like I said before, this method is trying to replicate Microsoft Intune start menu deployment. And it works only for new users on the computer. And now I will click on the button right here to copy the PowerShell snippet. And then I will go to my Vember workstation where I have this Windows Virtual Machine. And I will be executing all the PowerShell commands on this Windows Virtual Machine. And this is a, basically a brand new Windows 11 installation. If I go to the start menu, you can see that we have all the default apps in here. And now I will open a PowerShell window. I will run it as administrator. And then I will insert the snippet from the GitHub page and press enter. And as you can see, the PowerShell snippet executed successfully. If I go to my start menu, you can see that nothing has changed. Because like I said, this method right here works only for new users. And that means that it will only work for users that were created after this snippet was executed. I will also quickly show you that nothing has changed for the second user that I have on this computer for the John user. So I'll sign into him. And as you can see, we have the, more or less the same start menu layout for this user. So the snippet didn't affect existing users on the computer. Now let's go back to the admin user. And now let's create another user in this computer. So I'll use CMD commands to do that. I will use net user. I will name the user bill and then I will add add. And then let's press enter. And the user was successfully created. Now let's sign into the bill user. And I will quickly go through this menu. So I'll select no here, accept, no, accept, no, accept, no, accept. And this time you can see that we have a this start menu layout. Basically in here now we can see all the applications that we had in the PowerShell snippet right here. So we have Explorer, Control Panel and Calculator, the three first. We have Explorer, Control Panel, and Calculator, and then we have Paint, Command Prompt, and Registry Editor. So we have Paint, Command Prompt, and Registry Editor. And this means that the PowerShell snippet is working just fine. You can modify this list however you like. And as you can see here, some of the applications that I have in the list are regular Windows applications, and some of them are Windows Store apps. For the regular applications, we need to provide the path to the executable, and for the store apps, we need to provide the application ID. And to figure out the application ID, you can use the snippet that I have here. I will copy the snippet by clicking on the button right here, go back to my Vember workstation, and I will sign back into my admin user. Then I will open another PowerShell window. And I will insert this command right here. And as you can see here, we have a lot of applications that we can also pin to the start menu and here we have the id that we need to provide in the list right here and that's basically it for this method now before showing you the second method i will go back to my vember workstation and i will restore this virtual machine to the original state and then let's go back to the github page to the second method and like I said before, the second method works for all users on the computer and it works by generating a start file and then deploying that start file to all users on the computer. And here you can see the location where the start file is located for a single user. I will select it, copy it, 
Then I will go to my VMware Workstation, open File Explorer, insert the location here. And here we have the necessary start file. But before we can deploy this start file to other users on this computer, or also we can use it to deploy the start menu to other users on other computers, we need to configure the start menu layout in this user however we want. And very important part to understand here is that when removing the applications from the start menu for this user, we need to use unpin from start and we should not use uninstall. Because if I use uninstall, then it will hide the application in the start menu for this user. But for some reason, it keeps it pinned in the start file. And this means that if I use this start file to deploy the start menu to other users, they will still see the applications that I uninstalled from the start menu. But those users will not see the applications that I unpinned from the start menu. And for uninstalling the applications, you can find more videos about that in my channel. Anyways, now I will continue with the video by unpinning all the applications in here, except for the Outlook. For the Outlook, I will select uninstall. And then for everything else, I will use unpin from start. I will only leave few applications available for this user. And this looks good enough. And now we can use the start file to deploy the start layout to other users. And in this video, I will only be deploying the start file to other users on this computer. So I'll go back to my GitHub page. I will copy the snippet right here. And then I will open up PowerShell window. I will run it as administrator. I will insert the snippet and press enter. And the snippet executed successfully. And like I said before, this affects existing users on the computer and also new users that I will be creating in the future. Like you remember from before, I still have this John user, but I will also create another user called Bill. So I will use net use command once again, and let's create Bill and then add. Before going to the Bill's profile, let's first go to John account and see how the start menu layout looks for him. If I open the start menu, you can see that we see almost the same layout that we had on the admin user. The only difference is that we can see the Outlook application. And like I said before, that's because instead of unpin from start for the Outlook application, I used uninstall. So everything seems to be working just fine on John's account. Now let's try Bill's account. Once again, I need to quickly go through this menu. And once again, we can see that we have the same layout we had created with our admin user. And this means that everything works just fine. And that's basically it for this video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And see you in the next one.